हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू मेरीन इंजीनियरिंग ट्यूटोरियल आई एम अतुल कुमार गुप्ता एंड बैक विद ए न्यू ट्यूटोरियल प्रेजेंटली वी आर स्टडिंग मरीन बॉयलर्स टुडे वी हैव ट्वेंटी सेकेंड लेक्चर एंड द टॉपिक इज कम्बशन इन बॉयलर्स एंड टाइप्स ऑफ एयर रजिस्टर्स we will discuss the requirements for combustion in boiler furnace and essential features for their efficient combustion first of all we will see the requirements for combustion combustion is defined as a process in which fuel is burned in air to convert the chemical energy into heat energy for complete and efficient combustion the correct quantities of air and fuel must be supplied to the furnace and ignited about 14 times as much air as fuel is theoretically required for the combustion the air and fuel must be intimately mixed with a small percentage of excess air to ensure complete combustion of fuel when the air supply is insufficient the fuel is not completely burnt resulting in black exhaust gases the flow of air through the boiler furnace is known as draft marine boilers are equipped with force draft fans which force the air to the furnace usually a large force draft fan supplies air along ducting to the furnace or furnace roof which has enclosed box arrangement known as air resistor to control the air supply the incoming air may be heated by exhaust gases in the air preheater or by the radiation in the double cased furnace fuel is supplied to the burner at moderate pressure which leaves it as atomized spray and the swirl plate provides rotation to the fuel droplets a rotating cone of tiny oil droplets thus leave the burner and pass into the furnace boiler is ignited by the spark from high voltage discharge using atomized fuel from the pilot burner pump under control air supply once flame is established flame i open the solenoid valve for the main burner and stop the pilot burner few seconds later when main burner flame is established this sketch describe the combustion in boiler furnace air resistor is attached to the boiler casing and supplies the combustion air to the furnace so we can see that this is the boiler casing to which the air resistor is attached burner assembly is mounted to the center of the air resistor which carries the burner for atomizing the fuel and forming a combustible mixture with the surrounding air inner casing of the furnace is equipped with refractory lining to form the burner coil combustion air from four dot fan is heated and enters the resistor which splits in primary and secondary air streams
primary air enters through the inner baffle which is stopped by the tip plate to reduce its velocity and forms combustible mixture with lighter hydrocarbons. So this is the tip plate at the end of the burner and this is the baffle. Inside of the base of baffle passes the primary air. Secondary air is used for main combustion which passes through the outer baffle. So the secondary air passes outside this baffle and these are the swirl veins through which it is passing. Swirl veins are used to provide rotary motion to the secondary air and forming eddies. So what we can see that due to the rotation of the air, eddies will be formed which helps in mixing with the fuel droplets to form combustible mixture. The eddies formed help in quick intermixing of the air with atomized and vaporized fuel. Primary flame is formed by the lighter hydrocarbons of the fuel and burns within the burner coil. So this is the area within which the primary flame burns. And its purpose is to heat up the heavier constituent of the fuel. This is the secondary flame and it is used for heating the water and generating the steam. The total flame remains suspended within this zone. Flame should remain suspended within the specified region for its stability. The product of combustion include carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, water vapor and nitrogen and some excess air. Now we are going to discuss about primary and secondary flame. First is the atomization of fuel. In order to burn oil, its temperature must be raised above the ignition temperature and atomized for quick and continuous vaporization for sustaining the combustion. The lighter hydrocarbons are readily vaporized by the furnace heat which burn and form the primary flame. To prevent cooling of the primary flame, refractory is usually placed around the flame to radiate the heat, thus primary flame should just remain within the coil. The primary flame must be supplied with primary air in correct proportion and at right velocity. Heat of the primary flame is used to heat the heavier constituents of the fuel as they pass through the flame together with the incoming secondary combustion air. The stability of combustion process in the furnace largely depends upon maintaining a stable primary flame. The larger oil droplets get heated while passing through the primary flame zone, vaporize and begin to burn to form secondary flame. Veins of the swirler provide the required flow pattern to the secondary air. It is essential that the air is steadily supplied and arranged to mix thoroughly with burning particles of oil. For the stability of suspended secondary flame, forward velocity of air 
and oil particles should not exceed the speed of flame propagation. Secondary flame gives heat to the surrounding furnace for generation of steam. Now we will discuss essential features for efficient combustion. Good combustion is essential for efficient operation of boiler which gives maximum heat release with minimum deposits on heating surfaces. Following factors are important to have efficient combustion. The first is fuel oil temperature or its viscosity. Fuel oil should have proper temperature or viscosity to have proper flow. Correct viscosity of the fuel oil is essential for proper atomization and penetration of the oil for quickly creating a flammable mixture in the boiler furnace. Usual fuel oil temperature maintained at the burner is between 110 to 120 degree Celsius, which provides a viscosity of 17 to 15 CST. The next factor is atomization of fuel. Fuel must be properly atomized so that it can be readily vaporized. The third factor is adequacy of combustion air. Sufficient amount of air should be available to support combustion. Excess air helps in completing the combustion but reduces the boiler efficiency and increases the deposits in the uptake due to formation of carbon trioxide. The fourth factor is formation of the combustible mixture. Air supply must be intimately mixed with the atomized oil. Fifth is the speed of the flame propagation. Speed of travel of air fuel mixture must be the same as the steam of flame propagation. Next is maintaining the stable flame. Air and fuel must enter the combustion zone at the same rate as the product of combustion leave it so that actual flame front remains stationary. And the last is availability of time for complete combustion. There must be sufficient time for the combustion of the largest oil droplet. Now we will discuss the details of air resistor. This sketch shows an old design of air resistor and describes its construction and operation. Air resistor is attached to the boiler furnace between the inner and outer casing and double casing acts as insulation and brings back the heat radiated from the inner furnace along with the incoming combustion air. So we can see that we have the furnace outer casing and the furnace inner casing in which the air resistor is attached. Inner casing is lined with high temperature insulation shown over here and it is behind the refractory lining. A refractory coil is formed around the burner forming the throat 
and its purpose is to radiate the heat back to the primary flame for its stability. Burner assembly is mounted in the center of the air resistor which carries the burner for atomization of fuel and forming a combustible mixture with the combustion air in this area. This baffle is used to separate the primary and secondary air. This concentric baffle is provided around the burner for splitting the incoming combustion air from the force draft fan. The combustion air is entering from here and it splits into the primary air which is entering inside the baffle. So primary air passes between burner barrel and baffle to form the primary flame. At the end of the burner, there is this flame st stabilizing tip plate. The flame stabilizing tip plate at the end of the burner is used to reduce the high velocity of primary air so that it can quickly mix with the lighter constituent of hydrocarbon to form combustible mixture. So basically, the primary air which is coming, it will be stopped over here and here eddies will be formed to form the primary air within the burner coil. The secondary air which is coming, it flows outside the baffle and passes through the swirl vanes. Secondary air is made to pass outside the baffle through swirl vanes which provides a rotation for mixing with the heavier hydrocarbons and forming the secondary flame. The air check, it was used in the earlier register for regulating the amount of air using the control rods shown over here. Air check in the modern high capacity boiler is used to shut off the combustion air when burner is not in use. Regulation of air in the modern boilers is carried out by automatic combustion control at the force draft fan. This sketch shows a cutaway section through the air register of a modern side firing boiler fitted between inner and outer casing. So we can see that the resistor is fitted in the outer and the inner casing of the furnace. And there is a cutaway section. So some parts which are shown here, which are on the other side also we have other parts. First of all, the register is venturi shaped. The register is venturi shaped which reduces the draft loss by 15 to 20 percent as compared with conventional registers. This arrangement does not require the central baffle for splitting primary and secondary air. What we have seen in the earlier design, there is a central baffle which is missing in this case. This air shut off sleeve is used to close the combustion air when burner is not in use, which is activated by the pneumatic actuator. It must have a tight seal for preventing the damage to the refractory from thermal shock by relatively cool combustion air. And we can see here this linkage is connected to the pneumatic actuator for its operation. The burner assembly 
consist of steam jet atomizer which utilizes the steam for its atomization of the fuel and we can see the atomizing steam connection at this bottom of the burner carrier this burner tip provides a hollow cone of rotating fuel particles steam jet burners usually do not require swirl vanes for the secondary air as steam provides additional energy for mixing air and fuel but in this diagram the swirler is also shown we can see a peep hole and the front plate of the air resistor has a peep hole to see the flame inside in automatic combustion control system flame is usually monitored by the flame detector mounted on the cutaway portion so we have flame detector on the other side which is cut similarly on this side we have a pilot burner and igniter which is used to light up the furnace before starting the main burner and we can see an emergency lighting hole here this emergency lighting hole is provided to light up the burner in case of a defective pilot burner or igniter so this kind of arrangement is provided on the side firing large capacity boilers now we can see a roof firing a resistor this case shows a cutaway section of the air resistor on a roof firing boiler fitted between inner and outer furnace casing forming the wind box so we can see here the resistor is connected between the outer casing and the inner casing of the furnace and this portion forms the wind box the purpose of this roof fired system is to provide longer flame path and good heat transfer and it is used in modern large capacity boilers this resistor is also using a venturi shaped arrangement and the central baffle is for splitting the primary and secondary air is also has been eliminated we can see the air shut off sleeve operated by the operating cylinder pneumatically operated cylinder the air shut off sleeve is operated by pneumatically operated cylinder we can see the atomizing steam inlet and all the direct connections so steam jet burner receives atomizing steam and fuel oil through supply pipes which are also equipped with shut off corks to stop the supply in an emergency so here we have the arrangement to shut off the supply of this by this quick closing corks this burner tip provides a hollow cone of rotating fuel particles and the swirler provided gives the rotation to the secondary air for intimate mixing with fuel droplets we can see the flame igniter igniter and pilot burners are used to light up the furnace whose flame is monitored by the flame detector which is shown here igniter along with pilot burner and flame detector are moved inside by the pneumatically operated cylinder for ignition and brought up 
to prevent their damage from the intense heat of the main burner. This completes our study of combustion in boiler and air resistors. This book is written by me and covers all the topics as per Indian Maritime University syllabus. It is also recommended by Indian Maritime University as a reference book. It clarifies the concepts with simple illustrations. This book also provides answers to all the questions which have appeared in the examination conducted by Indian Maritime University. This book can help the students in preparing for the exam and also to work on the ship's boilers safely. Hope you have liked the lecture. You can write your feedback in the comment box. If you have liked the tutorial, you may share it with your friends. You may subscribe to the channel for getting notification about the new tutorials. I will be back with a new lecture shortly. Thanks for watching till the end.